Welcome to the Total Wealth Academy radio show. Listen and learn what the wealthiest Americans are doing with their money and time that's different from the middle class. Learn the roadmap to financial and personal success that includes family, fitness, romance, charity, and all the parts of a balanced life. Now, here's your host, real estate investor and mentor, Steve Davis. Hello and welcome to the Total Wealth Academy radio show. I am your host, Steve Davis, where as always, we're here working hard to improve our financial IQ, our financial literacy, based on the fact that high school and college do little to nothing to teach you about building wealth. They're there to teach you how to get a job, and that's pretty much all they do. It's our responsibility as individuals to get out there, study, read, go to seminars, and learn the rules of wealth. Because, again, they're not taught in high school and college. And here's a sad statistic. And it's really twofold. There's really two statistics I'm going to bring up. Um, The first is 70% of Americans don't read nonfiction books after high school or college. 70%. Now, I want you to think about that deeply. Do you realize if you don't read nonfiction books, and I know this is brutal, but do you realize how arrogant you must be? (laughs) You think you know it all? You don't need to read. You don't need to study. You don't need to attend seminars. You know it all. That's why you're a multimillionaire entrepreneur. See, it's not really working out that way, is it? I'm telling you that most 55-year-olds are dumber than they were at 22. Most 55-year-olds are dumber than they were at 22. And what I mean by that is, does your memory get better or worse as you get older? It gets worse. So because they haven't read any nonfiction books and they've forgotten much of what they knew when they were 21, 22, they're dumber than they were at age 21, 22. It's a sad case. And you know these people. Um, they're the people that still talk about what they did in high school. I got a buddy who talks about owning a Trans Am in high school and how cool he was in high school. And it's like, nobody cares. Nobody cares. What have you done lately? That's what's important. But you've got to be reading nonfiction books. Otherwise, you end up dumber the older you get. And then what some people will say is, well, at least I've got life experience. Well, okay, you're on wife number three, you're 50 pounds overweight, you're broke. That's not good life experience. In other words, <laughs> you did, there's no value to that. Most people have horrible life experience. Which brings me to the next statistic. 95% of Americans fail to successfully retire by age 65. 95%. Can you see why? They're not growing, they're not reading, they're not studying, they're not attending seminars, they're not learning about wealth. They're just relying on that job. They think that the job is the path to wealth. And even though, those of you who are over 42, 44, even though you've worked 20 years at a job and you're not in the financial position you want to be in, you still think that the job is the answer and you keep doing it. There's people that literally work 45 years, the majority of people, 95%, thinking that their job is going to make them wealthy and it just doesn't. The only estimate I ever saw was one out of a thousand one out of a thousand people, which is one tenth of one percent, um, ever get wealthy with just a job. We're talking one out of a thousand. 
That means 999 people remained broke for their 45 years. And one of the nonfiction books that I'm reading right now, and I've read it three or four times, I'm reading it again because it's been years since I read it, is Rich Dad's Cash Flow Quadrant, written by Robert Kiyosaki. Cash Flow Quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki. And if you're near a browser, I highly recommend that you just Google Cash Flow Quadrant. Then I'm typing this in, this is why I'm stumbling. Um, then click Images. And you'll see all these diagrams that illustrate the cash flow quadrant. And what you have, if you're looking at this, you can imagine a cross, um, just a square with four sections in it, quadrants. And what you have on the left side is the employee, or E. Below that, still on the left side, is the S for self-employed. Then on the right is your passive income. This would come from a business, a B, or investments, investments, I. So the quadrants are E, S, that's the active or less left side of the quadrant. And then the passive, which is owning a business or investments, that would be the B or the I side. And what Robert Kiyosaki brings up is you've got to have income from both sides of the quadrant as a rule. Now, could there be somebody so successful in business that they don't need any employed or self-employed income? Sure. But that's going to be relatively rare. Relatively rare. Everybody's going to be doing something. But you've got to have a passive stream of income along with your active stream of income. And it's really remarkable because this is something that the, all rich kids know. But sadly, the poor middle class, they don't know it. And this is why the rich get richer and the poor get poor. Because the poor stay on the left side, employed and self-employed. The wealthy are on both sides. They have their employment, usually it's self-employment, and they have their income from their investments. So they're usually S's and I's, self-employed investors. And they build that second stream of income, and 9 out of 10 of them use real estate to build that second stream of income. So what you've got to understand is if you're... Man, Robert Kiyosaki is brutal. The losers are on the left. <laughs> That's Robert Kiyosaki. Um, employed and self-employed. If you don't have some income on the right side of the cash flow quadrant, either a business or investment income, chances are you're going to be in the 95% of Americans that fail to retire by age 65. Savers are losers. Again, that's Robert Kiyosaki. Savers are losers because the average savings for a 65-year-old in the United States is about $400,000. No one can retire on $400,000. Divide that by 20 years, that's 20 grand a year. How many of you can live on 20 grand a year? Nobody. All right, we'll talk more when we come back from the break. Here on the Total Wealth Academy radio show, thanks for listening.
have money in an IRA, 401k, or other retirement account, you can use it to invest passively in real estate without tax or penalty. Our average rate of return is three times that of the stock market and mutual funds with much less volatility. If you have over $70,000, you can start passive investing today. Please attend our free sample class to learn more. Go to TotalWealthAcademy.com. That's TotalWealthAcademy.com for reservations. Thank you. radio show sorry about the confusion there for a second um next thing i'd like to talk about is a little bit different from what we were just discussing but it's along the same lines as far as self-education one of the parts of a balanced life is self-development if you're not constantly improving your self-develop yourself if you're not constantly developing new strategies, learning new things. What happens is your brain actually coasts only one way, and that's downhill. There is no stagnating when it comes to your brain. If you don't use it, you lose it, as they say. Um, In this situation where we've got 70% of Americans not reading nonfiction books, you can see that They're coasting through life. And that's why I say most 55-year-olds are dumber than they were at 22. Because they've let their brain atrophy. So what you want to do is on your goal setting, and I'm, I'm hoping that every one of you has your goals written, have your goals written down. And they should be broken down into the eight parts of a balanced life. Now, one of those parts of a balanced life is self-development. It's personal development, personal growth. And that's where you write down the goals for reading, for seminars you're going to attend, workshops you're going to take, books you're going to listen to, because I agree with both strategies, reading the books and listening to them. So what you're going to do is write down how many books are you going to read this year? Are you going to read six books this year? One every other month? Are you going to read 12 books this year? One a month? Be cautious of setting too high a goal with reading. Um, Retention is very, very important. I know people that read books and just throw them down, forget all about them, go on to the next book. You really shouldn't do that. It's not effective. You really want to pick up a book, read it, study it, reread it, study it, listen to it on audio until it becomes part of your subconscious before you move on to the next book. If you look at The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, which I claim is the book that changed my life the most, um, I've read it about 15 times. I've listened to it at least 20 times. And that's why I was able to incorporate those ideas and take advantage of the thinking of Stephen Covey, the author, and apply it to my life. So those of you with goals written down, which again, I I hope every one of you has them written down, I want you to think about this. How many books are you going to read this year? Write it down. How many seminars are you going to take this year? This is assuming you have the goal of becoming financially independent. Oddly enough, that's not everybody's goal. (laughs) I used to think everybody wanted to be wealthy and financially independent, but some people just don't. They, They just want to work a job and see what happens. Um, write down how many networking events you're going to go to. Why is this one important? Because you are You're going to be the same person as you are today in five years except for the books that you read and the people that you meet. So it's really a one-two punch. Les Brown brings up this point, and it's kind of funny. If you hang out with nine losers, soon you'll become the tenth. Here's the good news. 
Did you know that if you hang out with nine millionaires, soon you'll become the tenth? So you've got to make sure that you're joining groups and are involved in groups where there are highly successful multimillionaires, entrepreneurs, people that have out of life what you want, which is financial independence. You've got to be hanging out with people like that. This is one of the main reasons that people join Total Wealth Academy is to surround themselves with millionaires, entrepreneurs, so that they can begin to think and act and do what successful people do. So it's not only reading, it's who you meet as well. That's why I said pick a number of networking events that you want to go to. How many will you go to this year? Will you do one every other month? One a month? Four a year? You know, I really suggest six or more a year. Just like I suggest that you stay around six books a year. And really study them. Really devour the books. Don't just read them. Set them down and move on. So that other book that I'm referring to is Cash Flow Quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki. But those of you that would like a reading list, we actually have a page, a web page, where you can actually download a free copy of The Richest Man in Babylon by George Klassen, which I believe is the most important financial book ever written because it's, it's basically the foundation for financial success. And it's based off principles that are several thousand years old, so you can't really argue with it. It's just, it's been the same for thousands of years. But you can download this free book and get a really good reading list. This is the required reading list for the mentors and members of Total Wealth Academy. Just go to TotalWealthAcademy.com forward slash books with an S. TotalWealthAcademy.com forward slash books with an S, B-O-O-K-S. And you can get that reading list. And there's actually two free books that you can download there. Think and Grow Rich is the other one. Think and Grow, but I would read The Richest Man in Babylon first and then come attend our free sample class. And we'll show you how to use that book to build wealth for yourself and your family and build that second stream of income. All right, phone lines are open. It's 281-558-5738, 281-558-KSEV, or you can email me. It's steve at totalwealthacademy.com, steve at totalwealthacademy.com. Okay, a couple of you have emailed me. First question is the classic um, all of my money's in an IRA. Can I use this to invest passively? The answer is yes, you can. But you have to roll your IRA over into what's known as a self-directed IRA. Please be aware that there's no tax or penalty to do that, and there's no tax or penalty to invest passively in real estate. And... I know you've asked me not to mention a number, but you've got enough money to retire yourself in the next two years, no doubt. I mean, that's a lot of money in this business. 200000 or more is considered a lot of money in this business. If you know what you're doing, that can make a huge difference for you and your family in a very short period of time, and you're way, way, way above that. So there you go. Okay, let me read this next one. All right, this next question comes from a brandy. Yeah, this is a, a common question as well. Um, I have a full-time job and a family of four. How much time does this take? You can do passive investing in real estate just as easily as you can do passive investing in the stock market. you got to understand... The stocks are considered a passive investment. You put your money up. You don't do anything. There are ways to do that with real estate as well. 
and that's really all I do. I'm a passive investor. What I do is I find competent people who own three or 4,000 units, sometimes 10,000 units, and they're getting ready to buy another two or 300, and I invest in those two or 300 units. That's passive. It takes none of my time. I don't manage the properties. I don't go see the properties. I don't even know where they are in some cases. Some of them are out of state. Um, so, but the other thing is, you got to realize, Brandy, a lot of people feel alone. They feel, look, I'm the only person with a job and a family. What you got to think about is 99% of the members here at Total Wealth Academy have a job and a family and they're doing this anyway. So don't ever feel like you're the only person on earth with a job and a family. Everybody does, and they're still achieving great things. So don't don't use that as an excuse. Get in here. Go to our free sample class to learn more. Just go to TotalWealthAcademy.com, TotalWealthAcademy.com, and click on the free sample class there. Bring your husband and... Kids 13 and up are welcome as well. Um, don't know how old your kids are. But 13 and up, is they're welcome. And membership is a family membership. When you join Total Wealth Academy, it covers you, your husband, and children 18 and under. So 13 to 18. I started my son training him when he was about 8. But I didn't start taking him to seminars and stuff till he was about 13 or 14. So that's where we come up with those numbers. All right, Brandy, I hope that helps. All right, phone lines are open, 281-558-5738, 281-558-KSEV, or email me. It's steve at totalwealthacademy.com, steve at totalwealthacademy.com. All right, this next email wishes to remain anonymous um, 1.4 million bucks in equity in 10 rent houses how quickly can I generate a passive income stream what in about two years to three years would be the answer and you're right it'd be about two hundred twenty thousand dollars a year but be aware that if you're going to work with me, what I'm going to recommend is that you sell half of the houses and invest half of the money passively first, wait that two years, then sell the other half of the houses, and, oh, this is a gentleman that I've been talking to a couple times now that, I've been, now that I look at it, um, then sell the other houses and invest passively from that point. So, in other words, don't go sell all 10 houses at once. Keep some of that cash flow coming in while you wait for the passive income streams to begin. Yeah, you'll have some income within three or four months, but the big chunks don't come in until the end of the second year, third year, and so on. And But that is a tremendous amount of money. Congratulations on your success so far. But... Yeah, you're right. It is dead equity. You're not making as much money as you could if you had it invested passively here at Total Wealth Academy. So go to our website, TotalWealthAcademy.com. Click on the free sample class there. And you can learn more about how passive investing works at Total Wealth Academy. Okay, phone lines are open, 281-558-5738. 281 558 558-KSEV or email me. It's steve at totalwealthacademy.com steve at totalwealthacademy.com All right, we got to go to break. We'll talk more after the break here on the Total Wealth Academy radio show. I'm your host, Steve Davis. Thanks for listening.
is designed to keep up with inflation. The average rate of return over the last 75 years is about 7%. You'll get that even with the ups and downs. If you want a higher rate of return and less volatility, consider real estate. We make about three times as much as the stock market. Please attend our free sample class to learn more. Go to TotalWealthAcademy.com. That is TotalWealthAcademy.com for reservations. Thank you. Welcome back to the Total Wealth Academy radio show. I am your host, Steve Davis, and I'm answering emails now. And here's an interesting email. This person wants me to go over the $300,000 bet that no one will take. And I can do that and explain at the same time the four ways that every dollar that you put into a piece of real estate makes you money. See, a lot of people don't realize this. Every dollar that you put into a piece of real estate, it makes you money four ways. Cash flow, appreciation, equity buildup, and equity capture. Whereas when you're in the stock market or any other speculation such as gold, silver, or crypto, you're only making one way, money one way, appreciation. So what is the $300,000 bet? The $300,000 bet is something I've had on the air for 27 years, and no one has ever taken me up on it. I presented this in a room full of 3,000 people before, and no one took me up on the offer. I want you to think about this. Would you take me up on this offer? Here's the offer. Here's the bet. You put $300,000 in the stock market, and I'll put $300,000 into real estate. We meet at the end of the year and see who has more profit. Whoever makes more money gets the other person's $300,000. How many of you would take that bet? Probably none of you. I mean, I've, I've asked thousands, tens of thousands of people to take that bet. No one will take that bet. And the reason is everybody knows that real estate outperforms the stock market. Everybody knows it. You know it. Or you would take this bet right now. I mean, easy $300,000 profit. But why won't you take the bet? Because you know that real estate outperforms the stock market. But here's the question, and please think deeply about this. Where's your money? Where's your money? It's in the stock market, isn't it? Now, why would you have your money in the stock market when you know that real estate outperforms it? Is it because you're lazy? Is it because you don't love your family? Is it because you don't care? No, it's none of that. You're not lazy. You love your family. You do care. It's that you're afraid. You're afraid of real estate. You may have a fear that you need hundreds of thousands of dollars to get started. You don't. You may have the fear that, you, that real estate consumes a bunch of time. It doesn't. I, I'm a passive investor. Real estate consumes none of my time, yet I make money every month off of my real estate. Um, other people have the fear that they have to have perfect credit. There's all kinds of fears that people have that keep them from investing in real estate. The problem is all those fears are false. You can do it. It's just as passive as uh, stocks are. You can do it. So let's look at this bet. First off, the stock market guy is going to put $90,000. I'm sorry. The stock market guy is going to put up $300,000 into the stock market. Now, the stock market average over the last 75 years is only 7.5% rate of return. But let's give the stock guy an advantage. Let's pretend that the stock market goes crazy this year and he gets a 30% rate of return. That would be $90,000 profit over the year. So that's what we're going up against. The stock guy put his money in there, 300 grand in the stock market. It goes up 30%, so he made $90,000. What you and I are going to do as real estate investors is we're going to go and we're going to go buy 10 single family houses with our $300,000. We're going to go into a neighborhood where the average ARV after repaired value 
is between two hundred and three hundred thousand dollars. In this case, they're all going to be two hundred thousand dollar homes. I'm doing that simply to keep the math easy to understand. Those deals are going to cost me about thirty thousand dollars total out of pocket. That's down payment, closing costs, everything. My all-in cost on each of these houses is going to be about $170,000. In this case, the $170,000 includes the purchase price, the rehab, and the closing costs. So $170,000 all in. The first way that we're going to make money on this is a thing called cash flow. In this case, it's going to be about $400 a month per house. That's after principal, interest, taxes, insurance, maintenance, vacancy, and that comes up to about $48,000 a year. So we're going to make $48,000 in cash flow. We're behind the stock guy who made ninety, But remember, real estate makes money four ways, so let's look at those other three ways. The next is appreciation, and it's not a lot. Real estate only goes up in value about 3% a year. But we've got $2 million worth of real estate. 3% of $2 million is $60,000. We have now passed the stock guy. $48,000 in cash flow, $60,000 in appreciation. We're up at $108,000. We have passed the stock guy. But we've still got two more ways that real estate makes you money. The next is a thing called principal pay down or equity build up. What happens is every month that your renter pays their rent, you're going to make your mortgage and you're going to reduce what you owe on the property. It's not a lot, maybe 2.5%, but if we've got $1.4 million in mortgages and we're paying off 0 0.025, that's another $35,000 profit for us. And then the fourth way that real estate makes you money it's a thing called equity capture. And equity capture is the big one. It's the big one. In this case, and listen closely, please. We bought $2 million worth of property for $1.7 million. That's our all-in price. That means that we picked up $300,000 equity the day we closed those deals. In other words, if you'd have done this, your net worth would have gone up $300,000 the second you closed those deals, instantly. So let's look at the total impact of real estate versus stocks. The stock guy made $90,000 total profit. The real estate guy made $48,000 in cash flow. $60,000 in appreciation, $35,000 in principal pay down, and $300,000 in equity capture for a total of $443,000 profit the first year. We win the bet, which means we also win the stock guys $300,000, so we get $743,000 profit when you add it all together. Now, we would never take the stock guys 300 grand because the bet is not fair. But do you see how much more money real estate makes? And it's happening so much that nine out of 10 millionaires in the United States are using real estate to build wealth and a second stream of income. Nine out of 10. Now, Think about this next part deeply. Real estate saves your life. What do I mean by that? You made five times as much profit with real estate as the stock person did. Five times. Does it make sense that you saved four years of your life? You saved it. You're able to retire earlier. You're able to enjoy life earlier. You're able to achieve your financial goals earlier by investing in real estate. So my question to you is, what are you going to do moving forward? 
are you going to leave your money in a high risk, highly volatile environment, the stock market, or are you going to transition some of your money or all of your money into something more stable, something safer, with a higher rate of return, real estate? Or are you going to just stay in the stock market? I suggest that what you should do moving forward is move over to real estate. And if you think about what Total Wealth Academy does, that's what we do. Our job is to educate people on how to make the transition from speculating in the stock market to investing in income producing assets, real estate. And we walk people by, through this by the hand, step by step, so that they know everything to do and they do it right the first time. So, all right, any questions on what I just covered, let me know at 281 558 5738. 281 558 KSEV or email me. It's steve at totalwealthacademy.com. Steve at totalwealthacademy.com. This is an email from George. Let me go up, up a slide. He wants me to explain principal pay down again. Think of it like this, George. Every time you make a payment on your house, you reduce what you owe on the house. That's actually profit for you. You're not, you know, you feel like, hey, I'm writing a check. Say your mortgage is 1500 a month. Three or 400 of that is principal pay down. It's like a savings account. You're reducing what you owe on the property. So that's all it is with rental properties as well. If you've got 10 little rent houses and you collect 10 rental checks, you're going to write 10 different mortgage payments, and some of that is actually profit. Now, some people will say, well, I can't spend it. I can't, I don't, I can't see that profit. I can't spend it. That's actually a good thing. Because real estate not only comes with cash flow, it also is a forced savings program. And people need a forced savings program as a rule because most people spend every dollar that they get and put in their checking account. This is why 78% of people live paycheck to paycheck. So the wonderful thing about real estate, especially for me, is you... You can't spend it, so it forces you to save. It's a powerful, you know, yeah, you may not like it, but it's a great thing for you and your family because not only is it building cash flow, it's forcing you to save as well. All right, we got to go to break. This is the Total Wealth Academy radio show. I'm your host, Steve Davis. Thanks for listening. joke. When is the best time to buy real estate? 20 years ago. When is the second best time? Today. And this is truer than ever with the impending recession and the correction that's going on right now. Real estate investors are going to make millions of dollars in the next few years because of the recession. You should take advantage of it as well. To find out how, please attend our free sample class to learn more. Go to TotalWealthAcademy.com. TotalWealthAcademy.com. Just click on the free sample class button. Thank you. Welcome back to the Total Wealth Academy radio show. I am your host, Steve Davis. Um, I got several emails here about about the same thing. This is, uh, I'm not sure why. Um, our next Spotlight Night is next Thursday. Those of you who are on the fence, you're sitting there going, man, I want to build a second stream of income. It makes sense. Real estate makes four money four ways. Stocks only makes make money one way. Um, I want to get some real estate into my portfolio. The next available event 
is going to be next Thursday evening. We only do this once a month. It's free to members and non-members. Free to members and non-members. And what we're going to do is we're going to celebrate the success of some of our members. Um, we will be discussing both single family and multifamily case studies. Excuse me one second. Nine seven seven. I'm trying to get make sure eight eight two nine seven seven. All right. Sorry about that. I had an emergency text come in. Um, but the spotlight night is it's a fun event. It's where you come. We have cocktails before and snacks. And you can network a little bit. You can meet the staff. You can see the office. Get a feel for what's going on up here. Then we all gather in the seminar room, usually about 100, 120 people. And we do case studies of both single family and commercial. I think this one is going to be an apartment complex. And we show you exactly how we're making money with these deals and how you can make money as well. Then we break and have about 40 minutes of networking afterwards where you can meet the speakers, meet other members of Total Wealth Academy, and just see what it's like. It's a very, un, it's a very low pressure situation. It's a lot of fun. And again, we serve cocktails and snacks. Um, it's free, members and non-members. It comes up next Thursday evening at 6.30. If you would like to come to that, go to TotalWealthAcademy.com forward slash spotlight. That's TotalWealthAcademy.com forward slash spotlight. And this is part of personal growth. Remember at the beginning of the show, we were talking about personal growth and reading attending seminars, meeting new people. Well, this one will be a combination where you can go to a seminar and meet some new people and start growing as an individual. So go to TotalWealthAcademy.com forward slash spotlight, TotalWealthAcademy.com forward slash spotlight. Okay, this next question is from Sid. Oh, my email is open to you. It's steve at TotalWealthAcademy.com. Steve at TotalWealthAcademy.com. Okay, Sid is asking... Um, this is a member, and he's... this. I'm sorry... I see what he's asking. He's asking my opinion on a specific deal. Um, Sid, I'll get back to you after the show. I can't really do this on the show. Sorry about that. He may not even be listening to the show and didn't even realize I was on the show. But my email is open to you. It's steve at totalwealthacademy.com. And remember that my email is open to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, not just during the show. Um, I know some of you are at work. You're in your cars. Feel free to email me anytime. I love emails. I don't care whether it's one question or 20 questions. If you need help making a decision, changing your life, getting into real estate, just let me know. Steve at TotalWealthAcademy.com or give me a call right now. It's 281-558-5738. 281-558-KSEV. This next question has to do, it is from another George, different George. Okay, I have a tenant. <laughs> okay, this one's basically, he's got a tenant who only paid half a month's rent and is now saying he can't pay November's rent. You know, I, I practice cash for keys, George. You know, this guy is probably never going to pay that rent, any more rent. I would do my best to get him out as soon as possible. 
I would start the eviction process immediately in case he won't go along with the cash for keys. But what I would do is offer him this. Say, if you can be out by the 10th of November, I will give you back your security deposit if you leave the property in the condition that I gave it to you in. Let me say that one more time. Ask him if he can be out by the 10th if he leaves the property in the same condition that you gave it to him in. So bottom line is, if there's any repairs whatsoever, you can still take that out of the security deposit. But it's, it's a way to avoid foreclosure and get that property back on the market, get it released so that in December you've got a good tenant in there or maybe the middle of November, depending on how fast you can get them out. You might ask him to move out in, within three days, which sometimes works. I always give people about 15 days, so that would be about the 10th, about the 10th. But get them out of there or begin the eviction process. Well, sorry, begin the eviction process, cover your rear end, go and begin the eviction process, but negotiate with this individual to get them out sooner by offering cash for the keys. And I've had really good luck with that. I've never been to the courthouse to do an eviction because cash for keys almost always works. It's always worked for me, but it doesn't work for everybody. So I hope that helps, George, but get that eviction started immediately, immediately, in case you can't do the cash for keys. All right, phone lines are open, 281-558-5738, 281-558-KSEV, or email me. It's steve at totalwealthacademy.com. Steve at TotalWealthAcademy.com. Now, Edward has a question. He has $30,000. Can he get started? The answer is absolutely. Um, the average out-of-pocket to buy a single-family house right now is between 15 and 25. You, if you got lucky, you could buy two rent houses with that, make about $600, $800 a month profit, and be well on your way to building a good portfolio. So, yeah, if you got $30,000 or more, you're in a good shape to get started in single family. If you have $70,000 or more, then you can go directly to passive investing. And that $70,000 can be in an IRA, a 401k, cash, equity in your home, doesn't matter. If you got $70,000 or more, you can go directly into passive investing. If you got $30,000 or more, you can go directly into single family investing, build up a portfolio that way, then sell that portfolio and go into uh, passive investing in the future. But yeah, um, you're in good shape. Please come see us. Go to TotalWealthAcademy.com and click on the free sample class or come to the Spotlight Night next Thursday. In fact, I'd recommend that because we are having a, a single-family case study at that event. Um, go to TotalWealthAcademy.com forward slash spotlight and come to our spotlight night. And if you would, ask for me. Let me know that you emailed me during the show, and we'll talk for a couple of minutes. All right, phone lines are open, 281-558-5738, or email me. It's steve at TotalWealthAcademy.com, Steve at TotalWealthAcademy.com. And again, I can't stress this enough. I love email questions. Do not hesitate. If you've got a fear, you've got a concern, you've got something that's keeping you from taking action on your dream of financial independence, let me know what that is, and I'll share with you how I got past that fear. And hopefully you can get past it as well. Because fears are real. They, they hold you back. Fears generally aren't real, except in the individual's head. But if they're real in the individual's head, it's going to keep them from taking action just as effectively as if it was true. So don't be ashamed of your fears. Email me, and I'll help you get over them. 
Email me, steve at totalwealthacademy.com, steve at totalwealthacademy.com. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Listening to the Total Wealth Academy radio show. Please remember that this show is for entertainment purposes only and should not be construed as legal, tax, or investing advice. Always get a professional opinion before making any investment decisions. To find out more about coaching and consulting at Total Wealth Academy, visit TotalWealthAcademy.com and attend one of our free sample classes on real estate investing. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.